paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Obsessive behaviour that can tear family life apart. He does an eye me, yeah? You can't tell you now. He does, does, yeah, I think. A portrait of a husband and father devastated by obsessive compulsive disorder. I have got deep thoughts, but also you will kill me. And of a family learning to cope with his crippling <laughs> mental illness. Yeah, I don't want to know about it. If I don't know now what I know, I don't think. I'd have gone near him, to be honest. Hugh Turner has suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder for more than 40 years. Hugh is trapped in a world of endless order, symmetry, and repetition. His compulsive rituals mean he hasn't been able to work for the past 16 years. And Hugh's rituals cannot be completed until he's counted 12 lots of 12 on his fingers. It's a set of numbers he's driven to repeat again and again. Twelve has always been my favourite number for some reason or like you mean? Twelve. I started off with one lot of twelves, then it was another two lots of twelves, then three lots of twelves, till eventually it came to twelve lots of twelves, I'm counting. But if I don't do it on my hands, I do it in my mind. Everything in Hugh's entire house has its own special place and must be precisely measured, exactly positioned. I do measure with my fingers and my lines and things like that. They are on certain angles. From the first line of the dog's paw there, I'm very happy that when it's that line there, perfect, it's okay. From the living room, it's my cottages, my rope and control boxes. Everything in this house is gonna be perfect. It could take me up to 10 to 15 minutes just to put a pack of bacon in the fridge, but it's actually got to be at the sides. This is the way my rituals are. These ornaments, or any item in the house, is not in a perfect position. My anxiety is really bad. Unfortunately for Hugh, his anxiety is really bad, quite often. Perfect. And keeping everything in the house perfect isn't easy, living with the other five members of his family. There are sons Michael and Mark, wife Maureen and daughter Joanne, whose learning difficulties mean Hugh and Maureen have even more childcare responsibilities with grandson Julian. Who's your kids? Mm. God love you. Love you to bits, don't we, eh? Hugh's rituals can last for up to 18 hours a day. It's exhausting, but he's driven by an all-consuming fear. If I don't do these rituals, I find great harm's going to go to my children. Either my grandchild's going to be kidnapped, my wife's on a bike, there's a tanker or a wagon coming the side of her, a bus or something like that, knocks her off a bike. Michael might go out and he might get stabbed. Mark, I fear he may go in the ring and they meet one mean bastard who's going to give him a lucky punch and it may hit the temple in his head or something like that. I've got two identities. I'm you, Turner. But yet again, there's another person inside of me. I'm me. But the other side of me is my OCD. I am two people. I'm trapped in my own world. Obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, is a mental disorder that consists of recurrent intrusive thoughts or images or urges which are extremely anxiety provoking and distressing. And that leads the individual to either avoid the situation or activities that provoke them, 
or to do various compulsions, things you have to do over and over again until you feel comfortable, till it feels right. Hughes' type of OCD is of recurrent intrusive thoughts and especially images of tragic events happening to his family, which he feels he has to protect. He has a wide range of rituals, order and symmetry and tidiness, which he feels that he has to do over and over again until he feels comfortable. A lot of these rituals that he's been doing have functioned by avoiding, I think, a lot of the, th the thoughts and images that he has. You know, whilst he does them, it stops him thinking about these images that he finds so terrifying. If I do the rituals and do my counting, checking and enumerating them and things like that, I think so, well, the family's safe. He feels that he's protecting his family, that it's safe and comfortable, but of course, he is completely destroying his family. After many years handling Hugh's obsessive behaviour, Maureen has learned to shrug off his constant desire for order. Right, you're going to get here now, aren't you? It's what he's waiting for to get in my spec. <laughs> he's dying to clean the pan. He's trying to take over and all then. Why don't you just chill out and go and sit on the chair? I can't, I can't sit down, you know, I can't sit down for a minute. I get up in the morning, you know, I can't sit down, can I? Hugh really can't stand still for a moment. For him, the simple act of Maureen preparing a meal in the kitchen is an anxiety-provoking act of desecration. You mean, no need to, but it's all right, leave it. Yeah, we're not going to go out. At least we get a bit of peace now, you be so. Me in peace. <laughs> he gets worked up and he's pacing up and down. It's okay, it's okay. Everything's got to be perfect with you. It's okay, it's perfect there. Life's not perfect, is it? Which it isn't. Everything's okay over there. But you just have to get on with it, won't it? It's okay. Everything's alright over there. Everything's alright here. Everything's spot on in this, uh, this room, like at the very minute, like you mean everything's spot on. House is more like a show house, to be honest. Yeah, you tell them what your granddad's like. You know him. <laughs> and there is one ritual I've not really told you about, uh, but I'm going to be honest with you, totally. I'd, I've done it behind your backs, but what it is, I swipe my chest 12 times over. When Yumi comes in, the first thing he'll go is that pan. He'll go fancy. You can see it when he comes in. <laughs> I've actually made myself absolutely sore and bleed here. I swipe myself 12 times, do you like this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And pulling and pulling. Well, you can imagine doing that a few number of times a day, like that, like that, like that 12 times. It is bad. I'm not getting any sexual kicks out of it, because it's painful. Are you with me? What are you putting on? I know, I know it's only a grill pan, knife and fork and a plate, but this to me is a big ordeal, you know what I mean, On a scale between one to ten, I think Hugh's problems are probably about an eight or a nine. He's clearly severely handicapped. Uh, he's unable to work, he doesn't have a social life. His relationship with his family is appalling. Oh, no, roll on, for oh, sake. He can't change his clothes. I've struggled that much with rituals through the day. I'll actually go to bed with my clothes on. He's lost all dignity and ability to care for himself. I'm looking for help here, Simon. He's definitely very severe. OCD frequently devastates the family as well, and different members of the family may try to cope in different ways. I think Maureen has been trying to shut it off and to sort of deny it and get away and escape from it as much as she can. But that makes her more distant and separated from Hugh. Okay. I come here just to chill out, just relax and talk to people. I just have that space away from you a few hours, because you have to. Otherwise, you'd be sitting there and you'll end up counting in twelves. Perfect. And you would. And it's not my favourite number because I'm sick of listening to it. I'd sooner do 12 times around the gym than putting <laughs> than that. <laughs> 12. 
as melhor dos meu ombro. Quando eu te vi, eu só pensei que estava tarde, um pouco posh, para ser honesto. E eu ia para o quarto e nada estava em lugar. Há anos atrás, eu sempre pensei que o motivo que eu comecei a fazer essas coisas estranhas era que eu estava em casa. Well, I thought he was tidy. I thought, well, I don't have to clean up after him. That's one thing. But I mean, it's tidy and tidy. I really wish that I could have gone to my dad and, and said, Dad, why am I doing these three things? And me, 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 me mum and dad turn and says, Pull yourself together. You know what I mean? Till eventually I couldn't stand it anymore. I ended up in a psychiatric unit, and even there and then, I was just diagnosed uh, exhausted and depressed. I was never diagnosed with OCD. I was actually in hospital. I was taken to a room, leather bit put me between my mouth, electrodes put to my head. And these electrodes were, were, were put to the side, the side of my head here. And then there was electricity. I still picture it to this day. I was only a young lad, but I can still picture it. It's so painful thinking about it. I had to go in front of a, a panel of doctors and uh, I went even better. I had to go home in my own world again. Didn't even tell my parents ever again for a long time. I couldn't tell them because they thought I'd been cured. So for years and years and years, I lived in silence. That's why they call it silent mental illness. Hugh Turner has suffered from obsessive compulsive disorder for over 40 years. Everything in his house must be arranged precisely in its own special place. He believes his compulsive rituals of order, symmetry and counting will keep his family safe from harm. That was okay. For total peace of mind, Hugh must be in control of absolutely everything. Even everyday noises make him anxious. I clicked the ones. That's perfect. Frozen food packs can be particularly troublesome. The crackling is making my anxiety rise. What I do is. <laughs> Okay, I've done the noise to stop me from hearing any noises or cracking things like that, so that's perfect. Controlling everything at home is for Hugh a way of controlling the world and keeping his family safe. Okay. Hugh's OCD has prevented him from leaving the house even for a short time. But now, for the first time in over 12 years, Maureen's persuaded him to take her to Blackpool for the weekend. But disturbing his bag will be a massive problem. Oh, going to Blackpool, just for one break. Um, it'd be a test for you, Ian, be a test for me too. I've got to get to Blackpool. And that is going to be one big ordeal for me and I just only hope I can make it. It's make or break time now, I'm focusing now. I'm just gonna put my stuff into a bag. I might find a part of a corpse in it or something other. I've got visions of chopped heads, chopped arms, everything. I'm not gonna move that bag. <sighs> the air, I'm getting really waves of hot sweats coming on. Real bad waves. <sighs> 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 
there's somebody out there who can help me. I'm throwing a challenge out to anybody who can who, who can actually help me come overcome this. Hugh may have mustered up the courage to move the bag, but it'll take him some time to pack the clothes he placed so carefully. It will be stressful for him because he's never took things out of his wardrobe, socks or anything. If I had to live with Huey for a week, and I seen what he'd done years ago when I was caught him, I'd have to live with him for a week. I don't think I'd have gone near him, to be honest. No, I'm not going out water again. You either stick it out or you walk out, don't you? But I've always chosen to stick it out. <laughs> it's been a struggle, but Hugh's finally ready to travel. <laughs> Before he leaves the house, he must make a final check to make sure that everything is safe. Wear it ready when you are. I'm just making sure it's all right before I go and then we're ready. I know it's easy to say, I don't know what's going to say. Something that Maureen's all too aware of. If I left Juby for two minutes, he used to say, oh, I'm going back up to check something. I've forgotten something. You can guarantee it was always half an hour late. And he used to nag him like hell. I even finished with him once <laughs> because he got on my nerves that much. That's This is the longest time that Hugh's stayed away from home in years. It's early days, but at least he's managed to get here. Hugh's intrusive thoughts always make him overly aware of impending danger. What's that bus move? For him, a simple trip up the Blackpool Tower is a suicidal mission into unknown territory. Take a deep breath. Mm. Won't just fly, will it? No, oh, thank oh. God for that. Oh, is that speed? Oh, it's not much speed, that is it? It'd be worth it oh. in the end. It's a challenge for Hugh just to stand in. We're right, we're right, are we? Are we here? We're here. But now he's faced with a new problem. A glass floor 380 feet above the ground. Are you okay? You're not walking on that, are you? You wouldn't be able to see out if you fell down there. Oh, there weren't were much left if you went down there, would there? Like, yeah. you'd, 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 you'd be a goner, wouldn't you? That's how we'd end up down there, like that. Skull and crossbones if they like fell down there, wouldn't we? Oh, we yeah. don't know, don't For any one of us, walking over this glass floor might be tricky. But with Hugh's irrational fears working overtime, for him, it would be an outstanding achievement. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. I just think I've done that. I can't believe it, honest. That's one great achievement for me, that. Hugh may have mastered the tower's heady walk of faith, but back in his hotel room, and back in his bag is proving to be a much bigger challenge. There's a famous bag. Now, I may go into it or I may not. That's going to be a challenge. If uh, perhaps tonight I get soaking wet through it in the rain or something like that, I will have to go into that bag to get me the T-shirts and my tracky bottoms out. But that is going to be a challenge on its own. That bag will still, it could stay packed up to a good few days after I get home. I've got to do my rituals because I fear harm will come to my grandchild. I feel that I can prevent this from happening by making sure my bag's safe in the corner 
making sure the towels are straight, the deodorants in there, the cups are there, the tea bags are all sorted under there, the kettles are straight, the telly has been adjusted because it was on an angle before, morning shoes under the chair there are absolutely in order there as well. I've got to make sure this environment of this room is absolutely safe here. my camera. I know it's worth it. I'm frightened in case all of a sudden the lens of that camera just opens up. I fear that something's going to come out of there and grab me by the throat or something or the like. I mean, I've got visions of that lens cap opening up, gremlin or something coming out of it, and grab me by the throat or something, and ripping the throat out, the arm's apple, and then going for Maureen and ripping her and dragging her into the sea. You know what I mean? It? And all she's doing is laughing. Hey, hey, don't say that more for Pete's sake. Bloody hell. Life may be a beach for some, but for Hugh, a beach is potentially a very dangerous place. See that woman coming down here now with bare feet like that? Look, look. She'll stand on glass or anything. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's dangerous, isn't it? You want to watch this broken glass down there? Do you know what I mean? You want to watch your feet, love? Well, your feet. I, I, I can see the dangers there of her uh, on a slither of glass and that, that's it, their feet, their feet are ruined for life, aren't they? It's made me anxious, made me anxious. Look, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> little kid there, no shoes on his feet. I mean, that's everyday life, isn't it? I don't see all that like he sees it. Uh, to me... You just think it's, it's normal, don't I just you? think... It's normal, isn't it? I mean, I know it's an illness and I mean, maybe I'm green, but sometimes I just think it's like madness, really. But. It's not, it's an illness and it can't be helped. It's just the way it is. OCD is certainly regarded by many people as a secret illness. It's something that people are very ashamed about, that they keep it to themselves. If they're washing their hands, it's in their bathroom behind locked doors. If they're doing their rituals, or order and so on, it's very much a private thing that's kept away from society and, and uh, feeling very ashamed about it. And this is really sad because, of course, it's about bringing it out into the open in order to get the support and help you need. And for many people, they may suffer for 10, 15 years before they finally do get the help that they actually need. The holiday is over. And back at home again, Hugh's anxiety levels are already beginning to rise. If things inside the house have been disturbed, it could take him days to get everything feeling safe again. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting the OCD barrier now. I'm fighting it. Maureen's downstairs with the Hoover and she's knocking the dogs on the floor. She's knocking the kids' toys. She's bumping into the settee and chairs and she'd probably knock the dog and probably smash it. I just don't know where to start. What are you doing? Don't be throwing my clothes about. Well, don't worry about it, you. There's a good clothes I'll put on later on. You're going to put them away. But I don't throw... Well, I don't throw yours around, do I? Well, you do throw mine around. Yeah, yes, you do. I, I, I know, yes, you right. do. All right, I'm not well, going to get, get an argument with you over it, all right? Hey, just get on my nerves. Do, do you know, do you, know I, you can just throw things in drawers like that, Maureen, and I'm not joking, it's irritating. Why? The key thing is usually in therapy to get the family on board as well so they understand what needs to be done and to help them become like co-therapists and very supportive in helping you to... Uh, make progress. Have you done that? Yeah. Pull it off. <sighs> Struggling, Mo. Yeah, I don't want to about it. You just got to forget about it. You mean you've had a holiday and that's I know, it? But I can't move. I'm, I'm froze. If I have to feel like this every time I come home, I don't think I've ever missed another trip. Yeah, I think you're more too weak. You I don't think I could. You'd have to. No, what would you soon do? Let the OCD beat you? And crack your own. Well, up. it is beating me now today. It's, no, but it, you don't let it do you? It's beating me more. I've no more fight left in me. Well, you don't give in, you be. Like hey. a ball, you bounce back, don't you? I know, but I've, I've no fight left. Well, you have to. Oh, how'd you think? <laughs> so. Oh, thanks. Hugh simply can't cope by himself. Even if it's only at the end of a phone line, he needs the support of a counsellor to get him through his crisis.
I have, I've, I've froze in my bedroom. I'm actually, I'm actually froze. What it is, I'm really, I'm really getting anxious. It doesn't sound as if you're very well at the minute, Hugh. No, I'm not very well. <laughs> I, I, this is the worst day of my life now. I'm not coping very well. Hugh has hit rock bottom. He needs help, badly. But after 40 years of obsessive compulsive disorder, is there any hope at all of a cure? It's absolutely incredible that, that here's a man who's had nearly 40 years of OCD and that such you know, very simple procedures can actually perhaps you know, probably make a very good chance of recovery. And uh, one of the difficulties in OCD is getting access to good services in psychological treatments. When the man above gave me this illness, I, I, I think he's been very cruel. The OCD now is telling me to not kill myself. Hugh Turner has battled against his obsessive compulsive disorder for more than 40 years. He wants to be free from his rituals and has finally been referred to one of the country's leading OCD experts. do this now, it's a great relief. It just feels like you've had sex. It just feels, oh, it's fantastic. I've just had sex and it's, it's that great relief. You with me? It may be a great relief while Hugh's in control, but it's torture when he isn't. You finished? I know you didn't know my dogs morning, but you didn't need to touch I never touched your dogs, so no, don't go on. You didn't cause them with a little lead. No, I didn't touch them with my mouth. On a scale between 1 to 10, I think Hugh's problems are probably about an 8 or a 9. He's clearly severely handicapped. One of the difficulties in OCD is getting access to good services in psychological treatments. In the hope of a cure, Hughes travelled to London to meet consultant psychiatrist Dr David Veal. But back at home in Liverpool, Hugh's eldest son, Mark, has come to a realisation. Well, to be honest, when he went to London, I've realised when he's not there, I do his rituals type of thing. And I've only just realised that from when he left, where this weekend to go down London. It's the way he does it, he's just, he just gets frustrated and stuff like that. I know where he's coming from type of thing. From like, because I've done it when he weren't here, like. And the time elated. Like, he counted at 12s, but I count threes. I pull my laces three times to make sure they're tight. I don't know if it's the same as my dad, but I've always got to do that, like. And once I've done it, it's feel better like. <laughs> the Priory Hospital, North London. I'm finally here anyway. Anyway, anyway. Dr Veal has asked that for support, Maureen should also be there with Hugh. Let's go in the door. Sit down there. Nice. It's very clear to me that, that your diagnosis, you're clearly suffering from obsessive compulsive disorder, that you also have some depressive symptoms, and also problems with alcohol, right. yeah? But if you didn't have OCD, you wouldn't have the depression and the alcohol, is that right? That's right, problem. yeah. The problem now is of recurrent, intrusive thoughts and images That's right. of harm, severe harm and severe, death um, coming to your family. Coming to your family. Yes. So, so the problem I'm saying is the way you view these thoughts and images, yeah, right. because you treat them as somehow real events that are going to happen, Right. And therefore, you become responsible for preventing them from happening. Yeah. Yeah? Let's try and uh, dance with, with death, shall we? Let's try and make bad things happen. Right. Can we do that? So, yeah, go on. If you're, if you're willing to, to do that. I'm willing to have a go, yeah. Yeah. What, what's the most common intrusive thoughts and images that keep popping into your head? My son's going for a British title soon, and I totally worry that something's really drastic going to happen today, because every time I get to the ring, I fear that he's going to get a nasty punch in the head. And he's going to shut some of his cells down. Yeah. 
Get, get that picture in your mind. Imagine him in the ring. I've got in the picture, he's coming for the third round now. This guy's come back with a flying kick. He's actually gone down. I'm freezing because I'm... Uh, no, 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 keep going, keep, keep going. 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 You've got that there, he's dead. Just accept it then, just accept allow it. it to be there. Accept it. Can you write it out? Yeah? A few times. Mark is dead. Mark is dead. Just, just say out loud what's going on. Mark's dead. Mark's dead. Mark's dead. Just, just, just try and say it out loud. Remember, this is for you to try and be a good family man. Yeah, this is what would, would why we're doing it. To beat your OCD, yes? Is, it, is there a nice picture in, in your mind now? I can picture it. So Mark is dead. That's really good, well done. And you're not doing anything in your head to undo it at all? No. No? And that's... That must be very anxiety provoking for you. Yeah. Right. Is that the first time you've ever really faced up to any of those things? Yeah, that's the first time I've really done something In like that. In 40 years? In 40 years, yeah. Mm. So how are you feeling now? What it is now is, my anxiety is dropping. Right. I mean, <laughs> that's quite a relief. So, what, what I'm hoping... What, what's, it does feel good. It feels good. Because you've got it out of your system, haven't you? Thoughts and images are just thoughts and images. They're just mental chatter. That They're just your worries. That's right, yeah. Yeah? But they're very normal. You should have them. Right. Because you're a very strong family man. They're just it's thoughts. Just thoughts, aren't they? Like you mean, yeah. Right. yeah. And in other words, you can do this without having to do your rituals. The message here today is, look, this is very definitely treatable. You can definitely make progress and, you know, really get your life back. Yeah. Hugh may be starting to get his life back, but 40 years of obsessive behaviour can't be undone in one afternoon. Hello, yeah, Michelle. Sure. He's made progress with Dr Veal's therapy, but back on his own turf. He's struggling to cope. Tonight, Mark's girlfriend is cooking the family meal. Michelle is in Hugh's space now, and that's making his anxiety climb. What is that, <laughs> Just leave it here so I can pull the potatoes. Twelve, 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 twelve. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. I feel like to, to f*** off to be honest with you. You know what I mean? I'm not an aggressive person, but the way I see her in that kitchen there now, I've got, I've got absolutely killer. Are you with me? She usually makes more mess than this, like, you I mean, I'm... I never, yeah, oh, yeah, never, yeah, never, never, I always no, clean up no, myself. No, 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 but it's, it's me, it's, it's me, it's, 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 no, it's never good enough, it's never good enough, no, it isn't, no, it's never good enough, no. You're really getting on my f***ing nerves now. See, this is the best part about it. I'm in my own house, and I'm being bossed about by her. You with me? I'm in my own house and being bossed about with my own kitchen, where this is my territory. Whoa, he drives me wild. What, with passion? Uh, you wish. With passion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. And he knows it because we do tell each other. So you, you wouldn't think he's my own but my house, you know what I mean? When Yui's on his own and Michelle's gone back home and everyone's gone to bed, you can get him, Yui's sitting there all hours. It's about two o'clock in the morning. Make sure everything's you perfect. Yeah, little drop. And you can guarantee he won't sit in that bed till about half two, because he'd be straightening this, that, and the other. Hugh's unable to eat a meal with the rest of his family. His compulsion to complete his rituals is too strong to allow him to sit down and enjoy himself, even for a moment. Not so just nervous. <laughs> Nothing's right in here. What? 
Nothing's right in here. There it comes. Most nights, Hugh feels a need to drink before bed. But Maureen's not sure that whiskey is the right oh. medicine for Hugh's illness. You drink it like f off. I know, that's what we have done over the years. Shouldn't. Isn't it? I know. Let's face it, it doesn't do you any good, does it? Might no. help you sleep, but that's about all. That's all it's that's not doing your insides good. Hey, Michael, you have to do this. Michael is also unconvinced about his dad's drink. drinking. Sometimes he thinks he's talking to Michael and he'll repeat himself about 12 times. He'll say one conversation, he'll go on to another, but he repeat, he repeat, won't he? And Michael flips. And he doesn't like him sort of having a drink of a night, uh -huh. do you? Because he, he says he's, he's trying to talk to him and he slurps. Like that. <laughs> Just fine. That's a good impression, isn't it? <laughs> then he gets his whiskey, fills that up, puts it in water, swigs it, starts yapping on, then he does it, then he does it again. He can't just, he has to stand out there, then he has to swig his glass. But mm. well, I mean, I just tell him to shut up and stop going on at him because it does annoy you. You, you get it on your nerves. Just repeating. There's a secret side to Hugh's life too. He saves his most compulsive behaviour for night time when his family are in their beds. I do a lot behind the backs. If they was up now and to see me going through what I've actually gone through now, I think it crippled them because I think I think it upset them more to see me the way I am, like on my hands and knees, really suffering, and the anxiety is really making me feel bad. Alone at night, Hugh's obsessions take on a horrifying intensity. Tomorrow, his son has a kickboxing challenge fight. To protect Mark in the ring, Hugh must make sure everything in his world is absolutely safe. What a life, what a life at all. Doing this, I should be in college learning something, or educating myself, or reading books, or, or taking more care of my family and things like that, but I'm just doing these things. My life's just wasted with OCD, it's, it's totally wasted. Perfect. Just listen to that perfect click. That's all, that's all I wanted. That's perfect. That feels great. I've done that. It feels great. But everything I do is, is like nervous energy or uh, I'm, 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 I'm totally exhausted. OCD is my mate. He's my mate. He's my, he's my soul mate. And at night I said, please leave me alone. I beg you leave me alone. But it doesn't, Simon. It doesn't. It doesn't. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just living hell. I'm living in hell, mate. I'm living in hell. Hugh Turner's obsessive compulsive disorder is driving him harder than ever. Today is a big day for the Turner household. Son Mark has a kickboxing challenge fight coming up in just a few hours. To protect his son in his upcoming fight, Hugh's rituals have achieved a new intensity. Everything I do is like nervous energy. It does drain the strength from your body. Mark is overweight 
by two kilograms. It's only two hours before the fight, and he must lose the extra weight. This level of physical effort so close to the match is draining Mark's strength too, causing Hugh to worry even more about Mark's safety in the ring. <sighs> really get me down this ball. Else get me down. Just one stupid item sometimes really gets me down. Just knowing that I just can't get it right, it really, it really, really, really irritates me. No ones, yeah, no ones. Eighty-five nine. Yes, get in. We're under the way today. Get over there now. Just want to order a drink. Ah, that's a good lad. Don't be frightened, Daddy. Tuning the position of the dog's water bowl may seem futile at a moment like this, but for Hugh, it really is a matter of life or death. Definitely, I would hope that he would go to this event and uh, to use the skills that he's been learning to apply to it at the time, to uh, support Mark, be a good family man. The first bout of the evening is underway, and Hugh's anxiety is causing him to feel physically ill. Sick with the anxiety, he's been vomiting again, vomiting again, it's been terrible. It's been a bit of a, bit of a rough night, it's been terrible, honest. The real test for Hugh is about to begin. Will he be able to put his new therapy into practice? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we move on now with the action. An international bout, England versus Ireland. The contest of four rounds. Two minutes each round to be fought on the full contact rules. In the blue corner from Ireland, Pushing to the Adam's apple. This guy's come back with a flying kick. He's actually gone down. Hugh mustn't fight his own vivid thoughts and morbid imaginings. Mark's dead. Mark is dead. Mark is dead. He died in the rain. You must see them through. And as for Mark, he's full of life. And on top of this fight. You put me through hell tonight, you bugger. Hey, we're going to fair you. Have a good game, really Carlos. I know. Hey, I'll see you really later, mate. Yeah? yeah, okay, mate. Have a drink, mate. Hi, right, see you, mate. See you, mate. See you, see you the later. excitement is over. Mark's won his fight. And Hugh's overcome his fears to be there and support his son.
But later that night, Hugh is straight back to his old ways. Perhaps he's confused. Was Mark's victory the result of all the rituals he performed? Or would he have been safe anyway? There is one thing, though, that Hugh can say for sure about his rituals. It's like just having sex. What is? When I go like that, <laughs> and I go, oh, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I know you're laughing. Is that all it means, sex? No, no, no. That's how it feels. <laughs> That's what it you really feels like mean. a sexual... It's, it's like a freedom of, of just... That, everything, everything's uh, just... Oh, it's great. You have never told this before, Maureen, but it's true. It just feels like a sense of real relaxation and things like that, like, and it, it does release all the tension. He's got a sex life in the kitchen. <laughs> what are you yeah. like at all? Hugh's recovery will be a hard fight too. But now, with a referral to a 12-week course of intensive therapy with psychiatrist Dr Veal, Hugh feels it's time to say goodbye to his old mate, OCD. I want to break free from OCD. I really think it's about time uh, it, it give me a rest. I mean, for once in my life, I, I, I think he needs to give me a break. I fought long enough with him.